Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm really excited for our video today. I'm gonna highlight how waypoints work within navigation on the Tesla Model S. This is my long range version for any new viewers, but overall we're gonna see how waypoints work and I'm gonna highlight a couple other key items that are involved in Tesla's navigation system here. So as most of you know, Tesla have these nice large infotainment screens and a number of their cars. Well, one thing they've been lacking quite a bit are waypoints. What waypoints are, are intermediate routes that you can take as part of one overall trip. So that way you don't have to reprogram your car every time you stop during that trip itself. You can add new waypoints or new stops uh, directly in line with that. So overall, it's really easy to use. If I go ahead and click on navigation, I have the ability to choose from some of my past recent options, or I can type in new options, as many of you know, very simply. I'm gonna go ahead and select the Livermore Library that um, is not too far away. It's about 14 minute drive, so it's about nine miles away from where I'm currently at. Now, if I wanted to add a stop in the middle of this, it's really easy. All you do is hit these three dots right here, and then you can click add a stop. So let's go ahead and click add a stop. And I'd like to go to Starbucks. So you can quickly type Starbucks in very easily. And you get all your Starbucks options here. So I'm gonna head to this one that's only 1.5 miles away and I'll wanna go there first. So you can see right away, it already added that in as a stop. So if we start off here, we're gonna hit that Starbucks first which is where that black pin is, and then it will take us to the Livermore Library. Now let's say I have a number of errands to run today and I wanna to add another one. So let's go ahead and hit that. I can go ahead and hit add a stop, and now I need to go by Best Buy on my way there. And I actually have Best Buy down here. I'm gonna select Best Buy. So now you can see it's wanting us to go to Best Buy first, Starbucks second, and the library. Well, you know what? That's not really the route I wanna go. I actually wanna to go to Starbucks first. So easily you can click on these three dots again, click on edit trip, and now I can change those different options. So if I wanna to go to uh, Starbucks first, you just grab this little handle here, right here, and you slide it up. See how easy that is? So now I'm gonna to go to Starbucks first, then Best Buy, and then the library. And even if I wanna add one more, I'm gonna go ahead, done. But if I wanna add one more spot, I can go ahead and click on the three dots here, add a stop. And let's say I need to go buy REI because I need to get some outdoor sporting goods um, equipment for my family. So I can click on REI and right away, it's gonna now route. We're gonna go to REI first, then Starbucks, then Best Buy, and then library. But you know what? I still wanna go to Starbucks first click the three dots, click edit, and let's go ahead and slide Starbucks for the first position. And then I'm gonna to go to Best Buy, then REI, and then the library. So I can go ahead and click done on the editing process. And there you go, it's really that easy. It shows you your battery strengths all, all the way along. So that's really, really nice to see that. Again, this is a great feature for you to plan one overall trip, multiple errands and stops that you wanna go. And it calculates all of this within the computer itself. So great, great feature to have. Now, a couple other highlights I'd like to show you are things on the map itself. So we can look at, one thing is we can change the map from the satellite view with the, with the GPS all the way down to a two-dimensional view as well. And so you can see the two dimensional views, just a regular map. It doesn't give you as many different options. I personally like the satellite because you can see building structures and other elements around here. Like you can see, I'm actually at Foothill High School right now. You can see the football field there, but you can also see other elements as you're going on your trip, which is really nice. And now another key item you may or may not be aware of is this uh, lightning bolt here, which will show you all the superchargers that are around the area you're out. And, and if, I, if I zoom out, you'll see a number of them all over Northern California here, which is really nice. Now, some of you may ask, what do the numbers mean on these, these red um, pins? Well, let me tell you. So what these numbers mean are how many different supercharging stalls are available right now in real time. 
So at any point, you can click on one of these and you can see right here at this supercharger, there's nine stalls available right now. And that's why the nine was there out of a total of 16 stalls. And the max output for this supercharger is 250 kilowatts. So that's fantastic. You can also see your charging rates. Um, and some of them are based on time, but you also, if you leave your car charging for too long, cause you go into a restaurant or something like that, then they will charge you a $1 a minute idle fee. So those can get very, very expensive. You definitely wanna keep your eye on that. Now, another thing you may or may not know are what is around this particular supercharger. That's what these icons here represent. So you have your shopping, your coffee, food, other different options as well. Let's go ahead and click on the shopping capability around that. You'll see right away that there's the gateway center. That's really the only shopping that's there. So that's interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and look at that eight or that eight or nine staller again. Okay, let's see what else for coffee. What do we have there? Um, coffee, there's Starbucks, there's a Boba Bliss that's available like within walking distance, 0.1 miles, 0.02. So that's that's really interesting to see that as well. And look how nicely it zooms in on, on the street area um, that's surrounding that area. So that's really nice also. Uh, one, more, one more click in here I wanna show you guys. Um, let's go back to that nine stall. We also have food options that are available as well. So when I click on the food, whoops, Yep, there we go. Click on the food options. It's gonna show us all the food options and again, how far away they are from that supercharger. So you get an idea of the different types of food options that are within walking distance from that, from that uh, supercharger. So that's also a really, really, really good feature. Now, that another thing I wanna go to and go back to the main navigational area that you may or may not be aware of. Let me click on the three dots here. So we already talked about um, um, the how you can add a different waypoint or a different stop. We also looked at how you can edit your trip and change which one is in which order. I also wanna show you the settings. This is an important one. So many people may or may not know about the settings. So in the settings area, this is your standard controls for your GPS navigation in the car. You have your volume control, which is really, really important, being able to bring it up or down. You have your automatic navigation. So this automatically route to home, work, or next calendar event upon entry. Some of you may or may not know, but you can sync your calendar on your phone to Tesla's calendar in the car. And what's really, really great about this is that way when you have a calendar item, if you're driving from one place to another place where you have directions in your own calendar, it will pick those up and automatically understand if you're going home. So for example, the car starts to learn a little more. If, you're le if you leave work usually between 5 and 6 p.m. every day, it will automatically start to guide you home because it understands what your home address is, things like that that's really nice. You also have a trip planner as well. So that'll add in the supercharging stops um, if you need them or not while you're going on a trip. You also have your online routing and this finds the optimal route based on traffic conditions. And if, if there's too much traffic that's going on and you get out of that route and it's gonna take longer than 15 minutes because of traffic or maybe there's an accident, it will find a new faster route um, automatically for you and adjust that for you. So many of us are already used to that feature that's been around in GPS guidance for quite a while now already. You can also select avoid ferries, avoid tolls, and then using HOV lanes. I use the HOV lanes because I have a, a sticker on the car that allows me to ride into those lanes. So it's always nice to do that. Um, I'm not quite sure if it actually um, programs the correct route if I am in an HOV lane. If any of you know, please put that in the comments down below. I'd really appreciate that. All right, well, that's uh, my quick video for today. Really wanted to focus on how waypoints work. If any of you were confused about that or how to edit them, you now have a great video here to, to reference. Thanks again for your time today. And if you guys haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get my su subscriptions up a little bit more. And please give me the thumbs up. So I really appreciate that, everyone. Take care, and I hope you guys are having a great weekend.